Hi, thank you for joining us today for a Law, Diversity, and Justice program highlight. My name is Cassandra Seda. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the admissions coordinator for Fairhaven College. I'm joined today by one of our awesome faculty at Fairhaven College, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ceci Lopez, and I use pronouns she, hers, and I am the current coordinators for the Law, Diversity, and Justice program. Um, just a little bit um, about me. Uh, I wanted to share with you that I am a graduate of the Law, Diversity, and Justice program from Fairhaven College, uh, which led to my career in law. I went to law school at the UW School of Law after Fairhaven, and I am back here to welcome you all and share with you uh, the, the amazing uh, things that this program has to offer. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ceci. I'm so excited for students to get to learn more about the LDJ program. The way that this uh, highlight is going to work is I'm going to ask Ceci questions um, and Ceci is gonna kind of bring us into the world of LDJ and also just the way that she supports students through this program and also examples of what students have done throughout this program. Um, and so the first question that we have is, you know, can you tell us about the LDJ program, um, a little bit about the classes you teach, and um, specifically maybe the differences between the LDJ minor and also the LDJ as an interdisciplinary concentration? Yeah, thank you, Cassandra. That's a great question. Uh, so the Law, Diversity, and Justice program is actually a, a, a 30-year-old program that has been part of Western Washington and for Heaven College. And when it began, um, it uh, was a, a closed curriculum. Uh, that is that you had to be um, in, in this cohort for two years. We have opened that structure so all students from Western can benefit from it. So what is the LDJ program? So this is really a pre-law uh, program for students who are interested in learning more about law, who want to go to law school, or who are interested in careers or uh, other degrees that require a deep understanding of case law, uh, policy, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, in this core, in this, in this um, program, students uh, are developing uh, skills in three main categories. So uh, one big category is really understanding the dynamics within the legal system. You know, what, what does that mean? What is the U.S. legal system and its interactions? Two, uh, students learn sub substantive law. Uh, and what that means is that each class has a theme. For example, one of the classes that I teach, the introduction to the US legal system, the theme is reproductive rights. So we delve into the law that deals with that. Likewise, we have other classes in criminal law, civil rights law, etc. So that's the substantive part. And the third big component of the program is the actual skill development. So we want students that go through the program to have actual lawyering skills uh, and, and develop those while they're in their undergraduate studies. So for example, uh, we have students uh, write a legal memo, we teach students how to do a, a mock trial, then they do a moot court, uh, and they continue to actively engage in, in those skills within the classroom. Uh, we also provide opportunities for students to continue and develop those outside the university, but we will talk more about that um, later. Yeah, no, thank you, Ceci, for touching on how students can actually engage in the work of, um, you know, pre-law, right, um, in your classrooms. I would love if you could give us some examples of how students are plugging into this work in the community um, and just also, you know, what kind of opportunities are students expected to be able to encounter when they're part of the LDJ minor or even the major? Mm -hmm. 
thank you, Cassandra. And one of the things that I, I skipped over, and that was part of your question, was that there's two main ways to do the LDJ program. If you're a student enrolled in the main campus, Western, doing a different major, you can choose to do the LDJ as a minor. And you can also choose to be a Fairhaven student and then do the LDJ as your concentration of studies. So that gets a little bit more complicated um, to explain here, but uh, it's always an option. And Cassandra and I are always more than uh, happy to talk to students more about what that means. Uh, to the other question, um, sorry, feel like I'm running one behind. Uh, to the other question about what are the opportunities outside of school, uh, the opportunities are plenty. Uh, so the LDJ, as part of the LDJ, we, uh, we create networks, maintain networks with our local lawyers and constantly actively seek opportunities for our students. So for the past three years, we have maintained and grown an internship program where local lawyers actually are seeking our students to go and do internships in their law firms. Um, this can happen in the private sector. It has uh, happened in government sector. Um, and we continue to evolve and nurture those uh, opportunities for students. Uh, but just to mention a few, we have students working with land trusts. We have students uh, working with immigration law. We have students working with um, agencies providing asylum services and support to new uh, immigrants. And that's only to mention a few. Thank you, Ceci. I think that's really awesome that our students have those opportunities. A lot of times when I'm doing admissions um, and I'm talking about the interdisciplinary concentration and the LDJ interdisciplinary concentration, one of the things that I like to highlight is that students can mix and match classes from Western's main campus and also Fairhaven College. And so I'd love if you could give an example of maybe students that you've had um, or currently have and how they navigate that and maybe what kind of classes they've mixed and matched in the past or now. Yeah, that is great uh, because, you know, we're all about uh, interdisciplinary studies. So the, the way the students weave those classes and those uh, interests really makes their concentrations uh, so much more stronger. Uh, so, you know, students can really uh, take classes from so many schools in main campus, but uh, Lately, one of the, you know, one of the trends, it usually, it, it used to be policy to be the trend that students would take political science classes, uh, that kind of stuff. But lately, uh, I've been seeing more students coming from the sociology department and the psychology department. There seems to be an interest, uh, a growing interest uh, for students to understand the impacts of law in society, society in law, and the psychological repercussions of our legal system. So how those three interact um, has been one of those questions that students have been asking lately. So students are taking classes in those in those other two departments and being able to come to class and discuss the social repercussions of legal decisions, the cases, the, you know, the decisions that are made in a courtroom, uh, students want to know more about what does that look like in the communities that are affected by those decisions. So that's what, one of the things that we've been seeing uh, a lot lately. Thank you for sharing that, Ceci. You're touching on a lot of the uh, certain skills that students are gaining in your classes and in the LGJ program. Um, and I'm hearing, you know, social justice and uh, critical skills. And, you know, in regards to how students have perhaps created independent studies while doing these tracks, um, how are they learning those skills in the classroom and then bringing that into an independent study? And then also a little bit, um, just like a general idea of how the process of creating an independent study um, also just generally operates. Mm -hmm. 
So let's start with the actual procedural process of creating uh, an independent study project. So what an independent study project is, is an opportunity for students to delve and focus into an area of study that they, it's not offered anywhere on campus. So if you cannot take a class on it, you still get to study it, right? So you, you have to write a proposal, uh, students write a proposal, students find a sponsoring faculty that will help them, guide them and oversee the process to you know, pretty much hold the student accountable, but also provide the student with the support they need for additional questions, uh, if, they are re if they're encountering barriers, you know, how to get through that. So pretty much a partner in their education for this thing that they want to study more. Uh, what the kinds of, you know, the kinds of ISPs that I see is a lot of students who want to do uh, very specialized internships or externships with law firms or um, otherwise. Some of the, some of the internships that um, I have sponsored uh, recently, you know, range from uh, uh, business, business development, entrepreneurship, uh, students wanting to know more about the implications of taxation in small businesses, to um, students uh, trying to understand the deeper roots of asylum seekers, or um, uh, uh, internships with immigration law, uh, and trying to learn more about um, how can undocumented immigrants find a path to uh, becoming legal uh, documented citizens or um, how through the immigration process can individuals um, find ways to um, to be in this country uh, documented so there's a, a huge range of things that students are able to investigate and delve deeper um, into asking those questions. Thank you, Ceci. And then um, I kind of bunched in with that question, but I would love if you could touch on specifically how your students and in the classroom discussion, how you all are making sure that skills, that critical skills and so in talking about social justice, um, how you're making those connections, um, no matter what the student is choosing to focus on um, in the legal field. Thank you. That is really, really important because I believe that's kind of a key component of what students get in the Low Diversity and Justice program. Um, you know, in this, in this program, we not only teach students the practical skills and the legal skills that they need to, um, one, determine if, if they do want to pursue a law degree or uh, that that continues to be their interest. So part of what we do is also give the students the critical skills to be able to understand the deeper um, repercussions of law. So in a classroom, for example, um, you know, at least the, the, you know, the classes that I teach, uh, we really uh, engage in uh, conversations about, about the law. We, yes, we, you know, students learn how to find a holding, students learn how to interpret the analysis of the case and how the justices reach the, you know, their holding, but we also spend time understanding the background, the historical um, background of each case, right? Because each case happens at certain point in time that um, either makes it easy for the case to be there or creates um, creates a shift on the law and and understanding those moments right helps us understand what's going on with our society we engage in critical analysis we pay attention to the language that the justices are using we critique how they come to their to their conclusions and we try to learn from what they are presenting to us. So students are constantly, you know, thinking beyond the black letter law uh, in our classes. And I think that's, that's something that is unique to the program. Um, 
because again, this is one of the few uh, pre-law programs in the country. And we go beyond the, you know, the black letter and the procedural skills for students. And on that, on that theme, um, our students at Fairhaven College, when they're doing an interdisciplinary concentration or even the LDJ interdisciplinary concentration, there's an expectation that their senior year they're going to do a senior capstone type style project. And this is meant to be something that blends together um, the different classes that they've taken, um, kind of ties together the different fields that they've been studying and essentially making them prepared for that next step, whether that's entering law school um, or making that connection between you know, climate justice and the legal system. And so I'd love if you could give us um, one or two examples of maybe what students have done in the past, their senior year um, as their capstone project in the LDJ program. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, one, uh, one senior project that really stands out for me uh, a couple of years ago, the student um, uh, put together a, a presentation on a local filmmaker who has created a documentary on uh, lomination and, you know, the, the documentary on the Salmon Nation. And the, the, the event was a showing of a film. And the film invited all the Native um, elders who had been part of this documentary. And it was kind of a celebration of their culture. It was a celebration of you know what they bring to the region all that wisdom all that knowledge and the community of students at Fairhaven had a chance to interact firsthand with people who otherwise they would not have had that opportunity to interact it was also very educational because we all got to see a documentary film made by a native perspective that gave us that background that you know it's not easily accessible for many of us so it was it was a really impactful project uh, and it was um, it was really well received in the community uh, this student um, did a really good job in coordinating uh, and highlighting that culture, right? That, that uh, local wisdom that uh, we have here and so little, you know, we, we acknowledge. A different, another kind of, um, another kind of uh, senior project that I have seen so that, you know, the first one is a, is a very, uh, it, it's, a, it's a community event, right? Very visual, very, um, very celebratory. And the second kind of um, um, senior projects that I have seen uh, have been uh, for students doing an internship. Uh, at a law firm. So for the LDJ students, this is a great opportunity to go out and put those skills uh, into action. So we work with a local law firm, a lawyer who runs uh, a law firm and um, through that law firm, uh, she works directly with asylum seekers. So students have participated in that nonprofit doing direct services of families who are seeking asylum. So students um, are present to her interviews. Sometimes they're in charge of doing follow-ups with the families, helping the families get the children registered in school, helping them with the trans necessary transitions, uh, housing, and really being an advocate on behalf of, of the families. Um, so that's the other kind. And one more opportunity that the LDJ provides for students is that we connect them with the CASAS project through the Whatcom Superior Court. And this is a program where students are um, uh, stand right next to the guardian ad litems when children have been placed in uh, foster care. So the students um, are able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the children who are in foster care and 
uh, have a certain level of communication to make sure that the children have what they need and students participate during the court hearings uh, that happened uh, periodically and the students can advocate on, on behalf of those children. They can communicate directly with the judge. In fact, the judge asks them, you know, what do you think? Is this working? Is this not working? Do you have any feedback? Do you have any suggestions? What can we do best to serve th this particular child? So there, you know, there are so many opportunities and it really depends on where are the passions uh, that each student brings and we try to match them with a program, with a lawyer, with a mentor uh, to be able to help them achieve those goals. Thank you, Ceci. Those are really great examples. And I love that you brought up that, you know, at Fairhaven College, we don't shy away from talking about the fact that we are occupying Lummi and Nooksack Nation territory um, and just what that means. And also, um, taking into like bringing that into the classroom and thinking about um, indigenous sovereignty and indigenous perspectives um, and ensuring that students know that this is important um, no matter what kind of work you're going into to consider this um, because whether you're working in this occupied territory or another one it's important to know that um, and recognize and respect that so I'm glad that that's something that you touched on and also the fact that you know at Fairhaven College we really want our students to be prepared for law school if that's the next step for them um, or whatever kind of work they're going to go on to do. And so definitely making sure that our students actually get work skills and actually get to apply what they're learning in the classroom um, out in the community and learning how to do that in a responsible way um, and in a collaborative way. So I'm just so glad that you touched on all those things. Those are really great examples. I officially, um, we're coming to the end of this you know, LDJ highlight. And so I guess I would say, you know, for any students who are interested in Fairhaven College, for our students who have applied and been accepted and are starting with us um, in the fall, I would just love if you could, if you wanted to add anything else, you know, like what do you think students would want to know um, or should know about the LDJ program? Um, well, the, you know, the program is really dynamic. Right. So uh, regardless of what the end result or the or the goals uh, of the students are, we always uh, work one on one with the students and try to uh, help students figure out what their um, their goals, what they want to achieve, what the outcomes they want to see in their lives. Um, so we have this, you know, um, ongoing mentorship with each student. Um, the LDJ is a, is a great place to come and question really issues, the impact of the law. Um, you know, it, it, it is, for some students, it's really shocking uh, when we uh, delve into our rights, liberties, and justice class, and we start reading critically reading the Federalist Papers and the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and we start identifying, you know, the, the, the language, the language of oppression that's used in those documents. And then we, we try to pull those, you know, those uh, topics forward and, and, and try to deconstruct, you know, where we are. So, you know, we, we we make every single class relevant to um, to students in understanding the, the, our current events, in in making sense of some things that you know we 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 cannot even start to understand without delving deeper in some of those histories. But it's necessary for us to to understand, and able to make sense of, of a world that every day seems to be a little bit more uncertain. So bringing back that certainty and, and that groundedness, I think it's, it's a very important um, these days. I think that's extremely important. Thank you so much for ending on such an amazing note of just, you know, we don't, we're not gonna shy away from those conversations and also we're gonna help you navigate them. Um, and continue to think about how you're going to continue to think about these kinds of things critically when you move on to uh, law school, graduate school, or your next job. Yeah. So that concludes the LDJ highlight. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ceci, um, and for talking about it. For students who are interested, you can always reach out to me for admissions on how to apply an application process. And also, you're always welcome to reach out to Fairhaven faculty about specific classes 
um, or about the program. And so thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra, for having me over. <laughs>